I'm Rob LeCoury, a senior editor at Gold Derby here with Gabriel Bateman, who co-stars as Charlie Fox on Apple TV Plus's dramatic thriller, The Mosquito Coast. First of all, Gabriel, I'd really like to know, you know, Charlie is not just your average everyday rebellious young teenager, because we've seen that character so many times before. From your perspective, so how, what makes Charlie unique and interesting? Um, yeah, actually, I think what part of what makes him interesting is he's kind of the opposite of that archetype in a lot of ways. He really idolizes his dad and like, uh, in his eyes, his dad can do no wrong, even though, you know, clearly his dad is uh, largely responsible for a lot of the trouble that they get into. Um, but he kind of like intentionally or not like turns a, uh, turns a blind eye to that, I feel like, um, and just wants to be exactly like his dad, whatever that means to him, you know? Uh, so I think he that's unusual because most teenagers in real life and and um, in media kind of are more rebellious, kind of more like Dina. But I, I think um, Charlie is interesting because since he can't blame his dad, you see him try to kind of accept things uh, and think make things better than they make things out to be better than they really are and find someone else to blame, like blame Dina or blame his mom. Um, and then toward the end, he starts to grow and kind of realize like it's it's more of his dad's fault. And he doesn't really want to be like him as much. Um, and he has a really interesting way of processing his trauma, I think, that we kind of see in the last episode. Yeah, that's a really, really good point, because when I was speaking to Logan Polish, who plays your sister on the show, she quite astutely mentioned that um, Dina pushes back a lot on Ali, your the father figure. But she is actually probably more like him than she cares to admit. Whereas with Charlie, he idolizes him, especially towards the beginning of the show, as you've mentioned. But he slowly starts to realize he's kind of really nothing like him at all and has been put in a pretty precarious position probably throughout his whole life um, against his will. So when do you think Charlie starts to really, when, when does that, Penny dropped for him and did that start to change your performance as the series progressed over the first season? Yeah. Um, I think that Neil has a specific quote about that in which he says, uh, Dina wants to be nothing like her dad, except for she's really similar. And then Charlie wants to be exactly like his dad, but he's actually a lot more like his mom. Um, Cause Charlie uh, or Dina and Ali are both kind of hard headed and decision makers and, you know, go forward with, with whatever their plan was. Um, but I think, I don't know if there's one specific moment where Charlie starts to kind of realize um, that his dad isn't a perfect person. Uh, I would say it kind of, it happens over time, but probably the most uh, like driving episode in that would be episode three for me. Cause I think that's when he really starts to see the consequences of what they're doing because they have no water and they're walking through the desert for days uh, on end and everyone's exhausted. Uh, and I think he kind of starts to realize um, that it's it's more, his dad is more responsible than he'd like to think. Um, even after the shootout, I think is when everything really changes, not just for Charlie, but for all of them. Because uh, witnessing death firsthand like that, you know, it's, it's going to change who you are as a person, I think. Um, and then I think where it kind of comes to a head uh, is when they're trying to escape um, uh, the prison and the the pipes and stuff. Uh, I don't think that's like the moment where it switches, but it's kind of the moment where everything comes out, you know? Yeah, it's. I think you're right. Uh, there's there's a few events where they it just seems to accumulate to the point mm -hmm. where we get to episode six and seven and Charlie just realises what on earth has this man got us into? Um, so we'll, we will talk more about some of those highlights from the season, but going right back to the beginning, um, it's clear that Charlie and Dina don't really understand or fully appreciate what their parents have gotten themselves into and what they're running from. And that's a really interesting dynamic for us, the audience, because we don't understand and we're trying to figure it out. And so then you and Dina, sorry, Charlie and Dina are really our surrogate and we, we, we are experiencing the show through them. Did you like the way that the show did that? And so you were kind of playing, we were looking at the show through your eyes. Yeah, I mean, um, probably one of my favourite things about the show or specifically relating to my character is that the kids in it are written like actual people, you know, not just kids. Um, 
and they view things in, in realistic ways and kind of uh, process things in realistic ways. So that makes it really easy as an audience member to latch on to like what they're going through and uh, the way that they view things because it's, you know, they're kind of reacting how most people would uh, when they don't know the full situation. So pretty much for me watching the show and reading the scripts, just as much as my character was, I was like, you know, wanting them to scream at Ali and, and Margo and ask what's going on and actually understand like what they're doing. Um, and I think that kind of just, it brings so much more suspense to it because you, you don't know how serious it is. Like obviously from episode one, you see eight cop cars or something like that. And so, you know, obviously they're in a lot of trouble, but you still don't really know the extent of it ever um, and, and until towards the end and you kind of start to catch up and, and realize how deep you know they got themselves into trouble um so i think it just adds a lot of suspense you know absolutely um how much are you aware of as the act of playing charlie like are, are you completely across the detail or are you still a little bit in the dark um i think i know more than the audience for sure because i've had conversations with with neil and, and the rest of the writers uh, about like kind of what direction it's going in but I still, like, there's a lot I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to paint out a picture of, of whatever plan they have for, you know, how long they want or hope that it goes. Um, so I, I don't know to that extent, but I, I have some idea of, like, what's going to happen next. Okay. Well, that's good. So you have some context, but at least you're not fully in the loop. Because that's probably helpful, I guess, to you trying to portray this kid who doesn't really know what the hell is going on? Yeah, it, it was it was actually really helpful in general just because, not just with that, but the environment we were in, you know, it was really tough to work in. Uh, and there were just a lot of things that kind of added up for me to feel like Charlie on and off set. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what was happening with the story. Uh, I really was tired at the end of every day, you know, working in the desert for however many hours. Uh, and I actually had a pretty similar childhood to Charlie before he goes on the run um so there's just a lot that kind of helps me get in, into that mindset i think that's fantastic um speaking of the desert uh, because you touched on this a couple of times so episode two is uh, features this shootout at the border for people who haven't seen it with these vigilante militia men um and then episode three is when you're in the desert and you're trying to get you know to safety in mexico I, I know from the rest of the cast and crew that I've spoken to, they all said how challenging, but how ultimately quite fun in a weird way it was to be out there and um, really kind of pushing yourself to the limit. I'd just love to hear from you what your highlight was from the shooting those scenes with Rupert Everett, the director on episode two. And then of course with um, Melissa George and Justin Thoreau and Logan Polish. Um, I mean, it's hard to pick just one moment, but I think, what all of us liked about the desert uh or at least what i liked was that on the one hand uh it, it pushed me to my limits like you said in a lot of ways and, and it taught me a lot of new things about acting that i'd never done before um and like how i would handle certain situations um but i think something that the whole cast can relate to is that it, it brought us closer together as a family which was really nice because we were kind of all we had um out there and and justin would crack jokes all the time in between takes to you know kind of lighten the mood and and uh just being in the environment it kind of forces you to uh be more open and more vulnerable and and more honest with who you are so it's easier to make connections um so i think i don't know if i can really point out like a specific moment but there were just so many fun times in general with, with us kind of bonding as a family and getting to know each other on a closer level that also came across on screen i think uh, it really did. Uh, and I think Melissa shares your views. She said that that those scenes were very difficult to shoot, but you know, she, she kind of like said it was like a first world problem and it was, it was great to be out there doing it, but it was so difficult that you all seem to really bond over that ex shared experience, which is really fundamental. I think in trying to get this cast to gel. Um, we then get to the final episodes where um, Charlie is uh, being detained in a jail in Mexico and um, I, I'm watching you and Justin throw um, in those pipes in the water and just figured that would not have been terribly fun <laughs> to do. Talk us through those scenes. Um, well, I mean, 
like you said, all of this is even more than a first world problem. Not not yeah. many people get the opportunity to do you know what we're doing. So it's very fun, but it was definitely challenging. Um, uh, by the end of it, I didn't really want to swim like ever again in my life. <laughs> yeah, I I spent like ten hours straight in the in the pool, I think, and it was really cold at some point. Like I forgot to wear my wetsuit um, for a few hours, so I got like really shivering um, for the scene, which actually kind of helped it. You know, I didn't have to act cold. I really was cold. Um, <laughs> so method of you, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't intentional. It was just <laughs> like, yeah. subconscious knew that I needed to, you know, get into <laughs> the <laughs> mindset more. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was probably the newest experience for me besides maybe working with, with some of the guns was uh, all the water works. I'd never done that before. And, you know, I mean, every, if you know how to swim, you think it's going to be pretty easy, but once you actually get in there and, and work for like nine hours, it's pretty exhausting. You know, it's, it's harder than you would think. I was very sore for a few, like a week after, um, yeah. but looking back on it, it's fun. You know, yeah. <laughs> remembering it, it's a lot of fun, but in the experience. Moment, it's, it's a little more tiring. Yeah, you touched on the guns. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's episode four. Uh, I think that's called Bus Stop. And it opens with this really odd scene of, of these taxidermied animals being blown apart by bullets. And um, and for the audience, we're like, what on earth is happening? And then we realise it's Charlie and the son of one of the drug lord people at the Hacienda shooting um, dead animals. Uh, what did you think of that? I thought that was a really effective scene for us to understand there's something slightly off with Charlie. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of like Chekhov's gun in a way, you know, we start to see more and more patterns of Charlie kind of, of like idolizing guns and, and how they work and like how people use them uh, and kind of feeling powerful, I think, in, in himself because he's in a situation where he has no control over anything and he probably feels really the powerless. Um, so I think kind of holding that gives him some sense of power and, and, um, I don't want to say accomplishment, but like something that he can have control over. Uh, and I think we see, you know, pretty much from the shootout, uh, it started to build in his mind. And then it kind of, the first time that I, reading the scripts at least, was like, hmm, this might be a problem later down the line, it was in episode four, you know, where he's he's starting to ask questions about them and how they work and like, what's this one? And he, he, trying them with... Um, with Hugo. Uh, and then obviously that kind of comes back later um, when he, you know, uses, uses his pistol. But uh, I think that's when you, we start to realize that there might be something not right with how he's handling or the stress kind of, and also the crab scene. I think that was another scene where you kind of realize yeah. that he's not handling everything well and he, he's taking it really hard and it's clearly affecting his psyche all the trauma um but yeah um it makes me wonder you know someone like yourself you've been working for such quite a long time relatively speaking given that your age but this role to me feels like it's a very mature and complicated role for someone of your age to play and so because of that how much guidance did you need to lean on in certain parts to really understand and get into the headspace of someone so messed up, I guess, like Charlie? Guidance from the from your co-stars, but perhaps maybe from Rupert and uh, and Neil. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, every role is different, so getting into any headspace can be hard. Um, like I've I've had to be demon possessed or or like evil or something like that. And that can be just as hard in a different kind of way. Um, so I think any director that I work with will always help me get into that mindset because they have, you know, I think in some ways the director kind of knows best for what's the vision that they want to get and, and how to get that out of an actor. Um, so that always helps me, you know, notes and, and whatever else they can uh, talk me into. Um, but as far as like castmates, I think Justin and, and Melissa uh, helped me more on the side of like practical things, you know, um, off, yeah. off screen and sometimes on screen too, just how to handle yourself in certain situations and, and um, like talk, <laughs> talk to people on set and, and, and kind of more 
official fashion because I I had never had um sorry let me um I had never uh like filmed outside of a country that didn't speak English as its primary language you know and there's just a lot of firsts for me so just having people that are so experienced around me helps in general I could always go to them and ask ask a question about uh you know anything contract or whatever but um <laughs> I think probably Rupert helped me the most as far as like getting into the mindset of Charlie yeah absolutely it's it's nice that you have that mentoring from the older um, members of the cast, Melissa and Justin in particular, who've been working for such a long time. So it's really nice to hear that you're able to learn from them and, and develop that relationship because it really does, I honestly believe it comes off on screen. Um, my final yeah. question is not, not about the show. It's about what you touched on being a demon-possessed person, child. Um, I'm sure you're asked this all the time, but it's so interesting that your most recent roles, most prompt, prime, like, predominant roles in your list of credits are horror films like and lights out and annabelle and child's play and even the show outcast what is it about that genre is it just coincidence that you happen to be playing roles in those um kind of, in that genre or do you really enjoy it um i think it's both like I, I definitely enjoy it i think there's something fun about you know getting so serious and and almost primal with your fear and and like how far you can go to just pure emotion. And I think fear is one of the most pure emotions that you can play. Um, so it is fun, definitely. But I think also at a certain point, it kind of just like was part of my image maybe, or like with casting, it was that I, I tend to do horror films. So that's, I got more of those auditions and, and did well enough, I guess, that I, I filmed them. But um, I don't know, it definitely wasn't like an intentional thing on my part to like only go out for horror films that are, or request them or something, but I think it kind of just happened, um, which was fun. You know, I have, I don't think there's anything I've worked in that I wasn't proud of at the end of the day. So um, it's always nice to be able to work in general, but uh, horror films especially are, are pretty fun. Yeah, I think they, they look like a lot of fun. And I think, yeah, the more that you lean into that, I, I think the better, because it just gives you a little point of difference to other actors in your age group. And, um, but that being said, I was really, really impressed with um, your performance on Mosquito Coast. It's a really nuanced and interesting and compelling uh, portrayal of a kid who has a lot of issues. And I'm so looking forward to seeing more of him. So congrats on a really great first season, Gabriel. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, most, most of that was Neil, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs>